What you're seeing is me having a conversation with an open source large language model called Capybara Hermes 2.5 Mistral 7B GGUF, which I downloaded from Hugging Face. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of doing the same thing and interacting with an open source model from Hugging Face on your own local machine. Here's what I'll be using. First off, there's Olama, a framework that lets me run various large language models directly on my machine. If you haven't got it yet, I'll leave a link in the description to guide you through the installation process. It's open source and super easy to set up. Next, I'll be relying on Open Web UI, another fantastic open source tool that builds upon Olama and provides an intuitive web interface for working with large language models. Why do I choose this? Well, while Olama is great, it mainly uses command line tools like a terminal app, which isn't always the most comfortable way to work. Open Web UI offers a clean and user-friendly interface that makes talking to a large language model much easier. You can find instructions on how to install Open Web UI in the description. Last but not least, I'll be using Microsoft Visual Studio Code as my editor of choice. It's also free and easy to install. You can use any other editor you like, but this is the one I'm most familiar with. What you'll also need is a quantized model, specifically a GGUF file, which you can download from Hugging Face. But what is a quantized model? Quantization is a technique used to shrink large language models so they can run efficiently on devices with limited resources, such as laptops or mobile phones. Think of it like compressing a file into a zip archive. While quantization can lead to a trade-off between precision and accuracy, the impact is often not significant for everyday use cases, as the quantize model can still perform remarkably well compared to its full-sized version. The process of importing a GGUF file into Olama is extremely straightforward, needing only two easy steps. First, you'll generate a model file that includes technical details on how the model should behave. Next, you'll create a new model from that very same model file. Hugging Face makes it simple to find quantized models in GGUF format. To get started, head over to their model section and look for the tag list on the left side of the page. Under Library, you'll find the GGUF tag. Click on that to narrow down your search results to only include models with a GGUF file. I'll be importing a model called Capybara Hermes 2.5 Mistral 7B GGUF from the bloke. You can find the link in the description. Let me show you the model card page on Hugging Face. As you can see, the bloke provides a detailed overview of the available files and their implications. For instance, some files are more compressed, which means they may not be as accurate in their performance, while others are less compressed and therefore offer better accuracy. It's up to you to decide what you need. I'll be choosing the Q4KM version, which strikes a good balance between compression and quality. To access the file, simply click on the link that leads to it and then press the download button. One of my main hurdles when working with open source models is deciphering how to populate the model file correctly. Luckily, the Olama team has provided fantastic documentation on that very topic, which I'll include as links in the description. It covers both the must-haves and nice-to-haves for a model file, plus plenty of helpful examples to get you started. The syntax for a model file is always consistent. Instruction followed by arguments. Now you can refer to this table for a list of possible instructions. For instance, the from instruction is important. It specifies the base model your custom model will be built upon, like the Capybara Hermes GGUF file in our case. 
There is also documentation available on importing files, which explicitly notes that many chat models rely on prompt templates to provide accurate responses. Specifying a default prompt template can be done using the template instruction in the model file. However, the question remains. How do we determine what arguments to include after the template instruction? Well, there are two approaches. The first approach is to check the README file of the model. On Hugging Face, you can find the template instruction provided by the creator. However, when I tried this approach, it didn't work as expected for me. Despite some experimentation, the model failed to provide accurate answers to my questions and instead responded to unrelated queries that I hadn't even asked. The second approach I took was to leverage the parameters of the base model. Since this quantized model was built upon a fine-tuned model, I decided to backtrack and retrieve the original model's arguments from its documentation. I then copied these arguments into my model file, which ultimately proved to be a successful strategy for me. Let me walk you through it. To begin with, we need to identify the base model. While it may be possible to determine the base model by recognizing its name in the quantized model's name, I wouldn't advise relying solely on that information. Instead, head over to the model page of the quantized model on Hugging Face. On the right, you'll find information about the original source model that this quantized model was derived from. Click on View Base Model, which will take you to the Capybara Hermes 2.5 Mistral 7B model from Argilla. From there, you'll see that the base model is actually Open Hermes 2.5 Mistral 7B from Technium. Another click will lead you to the original model, which is the Mistral model. The Mistral model is available on Olama, which means that all the necessary information for our model file is readily accessible and in the correct format. As such, you can either copy and paste the parameters from the Olama model page for Mistral into the right format. Or, if you prefer a more efficient approach, which I personally do, simply copy the model file of Mistral to create your own custom file. So let's do that. If you haven't already, you can easily download Mistral into Olama through Open Web UI. Simply search for Mistral in the model drop-down list and then enter the name in the search bar. The Open Web UI will display an option to pull Mistral from olama.com. This action will directly download the model from the Olama website to your local machine via the Olama application. Now enough with the theory, let's create that model file. From now on, we'll be working exclusively within Visual Studio Code. To get started, launch VS Code and open the Explorer view on the left-hand side of the screen. This will allow you to see your files organized in a tree structure. Next, navigate to the folder where you'd like to work. I will create a new folder called Model Files. Next, let's open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code. This will allow us to execute commands directly within our code editor. The command to copy the original Mistral model file is olama show mistral dash dash model file angle bracket cp model file. Let's break this down. I'm using the show command to instruct Olama to display the model file of the original Mistral model. However, instead of showing it in the terminal, I'm telling Olama to copy the content into a new file called CP model file. The syntax is the same for any model you'd like to use. When I hit enter, Olama creates a new file for me named CP model file. When I open it, I'll find that it contains the exact same information as the original Mistral model file. Let's take a look at this file together. 
First off, there's a from instruction, which is one of the mandatory instructions we need to include in our model file. As you can see, it currently points to a strange-looking file name on my machine that contains the original Mistral model I downloaded from Olama. Let's update the file path to point to the location where we saved the ggu.f file we downloaded earlier. In my instance, it's the download folder. This is because we want to create our model based on this source file. And for better readability, I'll just delete the comments that came with the model file copy and add my own. The next instruction is template instruction, which includes the complete prompt template that will be fed into the model. Notice the significant difference between this template and the one provided on the Hugging Face model page. I'll just leave it as is and add a comment to explain what it does for better readability. Next, you'll notice two parameter instructions with stop arguments. These settings define the stop sequences to be used. In essence, when the model encounters any of these patterns during generation, it will cease producing text and return instead. I won't be changing any of those either. The final one is license, which outlines the Mistral license for the model. This is something you would set if you were to publish your own model on Olama, which you can absolutely do. But we don't need this for importing the model. So I'll remove everything that comes after license. If not already done, save your model file. And we're done with step one. Step 2 is to create a model from the model file. To do this, I'll use the command olama create my kapaibara hermes f cp model file. Let's break down this command. Here I'm telling olama to create a new model called my kapaibara hermes. The dash f flag specifies the name of the model file to use for model creation, which in this case is cp model file. Olama will now extract all the information from our model file and create a brand new model called My Capybara Hermes. You can confirm that this has been done by typing Olama list, which will show you the newly created model. Let's put our imported model to the test. I'll open OpenWeb UI, refresh the page, and create a new chat window. Next, I'll pick the model I just created, My Capybara Hermes and ask it some questions. Let's start with... Suggest a good recipe for a noodle dish. That's a great response. Next, let's test how well the model remembers our conversation by asking if I can do the same recipe using rice instead. And the response is awesome. It gives me a great answer that only changes the parts where I need additional instructions for substituting noodles with rice. If you're not satisfied with the performance of the imported model, don't worry. You can always adjust the model file to suit your needs. For instance, you could modify its parameters or add a system prompt that affects how your model behaves. Watch my video on customizing models for more information. So there you have it, a simple way to import any GGUF file into Olama. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.